Oh, you got the button back? Okay, good morning, everybody, um, and welcome to, to this morning's webinar. Hope you're all keeping safe and well and not too cold in this uh, in this polar air uh, Thursday morning that we have this morning. Um, as usual, it's great to see kind of all flooding in there. If somebody can pop on the chat, just let us know that you can hear us, see us, and um, that everything's working on your side. That'd be that'd be great. Oh, good morning, Brian. Yeah, it is. It is pretty cold this morning, so <laughs> great to have you here with us. That's great. Um, so my name is Fania Stoney. I think most of you will know me at this stage, um, but I'm a consultant here with Great Place to Work, and I'm going to be hosting today's session uh, alongside my colleague Cahill Divley and our expert panel. Um, and we're going to be doing those formal intros a little bit later on. Um, so this morning's uh, webinar is all around how to recognize your, your people virtually. So we're going to be really deep diving into that topic um, a little bit later on. Um, it is going to be our last webinar of 2020, um, so it's it's a bit strange to think it's actually been nine whole months since we hosted our first one uh, back in March. Um, um, I think we've come uh, come uh, come a little bit of a way um, in how we're doing it, but uh, we've been delighted to have you all with us and, and kind of be a part of that. So thank you all for 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 kind of joining us and, and sticking with it. Um, and uh, it isn't going to be our our last webinar. We are going to be kicking off in January with our brand activation event. I know a lot of you would have been with us in the Odeon um, back at the, the start of this year, but we'll be hosting that virtually um, in, in January ahead of our awards on March the 10th, um, which is creeping up on us day by day. Um, but really, really looking forward to, to that this year. Um, so today's topic is really in response to the feedback that you guys were, were giving us. We ran a, a poll uh, over the last little while around, you know, what was it that you wanted to hear from us as we began to wrap up this year's webinars? And you can see that recognizing your employees was really the kind of the one that came out voted for the most and um, flows closely followed by well-being and communication and actually i think across both uh, speakers today we're going to be touching on elements of each of those things and um, it's just one of those things i think recognition itself has broadened out to a much more kind of a holistic view of what recognition means and um, so we are going to be looking at at all of those today um, we have been keeping an eye. We we uh, we do uh, keep an eye on kind of all the activity that we see you guys are, are up to across all the social media channels and kind of in our conversations with you. And it's been great to see organisations really begin to adapt their their recognition for the, the virtual space, I suppose. Um, keeping up with lengths of service, keeping up with recognising the team effort and creating a great place to work. Um, thinking about things seasonally, sending out goodie packs, um, putting the employee story to the heart of the recognition practices. You know, there's been there's been lots going on. Um, and it's it's brilliant to see that. And today's speakers um, are really going to give you kind of more insight from their own experience of, of COVID and how they've uh, changed and adapted recognition and what elements they've kept the same and what elements we're all looking forward to getting back to when hopefully uh, the world is a bit more normal uh, in, in 2021. Um, so a little bit of, of housekeeping from, from me. We will be, as usual, wrapped up within the hour and the slides and the recording will be uh, available afterwards. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Cahill Dibley to intro our first speaker. So over to you, Cahill. Thank you very much, Fania. Good morning, everyone. Hope you're all well. Hope everyone is, is safe and, and healthy. So as Fania said, we're, we're lots of webinars in now. This is our final webinar this year. I feel like we have, should have some sort of big final song or something like that. Um, don't worry, I won't sing. Um, but we do have our brand activation event kicking it off in, in January again. But thank you very much to all the community and great place to work. We wouldn't have been able to do these webinars without um, your support. And of course, the team in, in, in great place to work really appreciate it. Um, so this morning, uh, again, lots of interest in the topic, right? How you do recognition virtually. Um, and we're going to share a flavor of some ideas. Um, and a flavor of some practices. We know people out there are doing some great things themselves. Uh, so please post those things in the chat. We'd love to hear what they are. Um, and, and let's sort of try and have as much of a conversation as we can with everyone. So any questions that you have, please please feel free to, to post it in the chat function. Uh, we'd appreciate it. It keeps us going, those questions. So please post them in. Um, so first up, uh, delighted to welcome Laura Doyle. Uh, Laura is the head of uh, HR for Distilled SCH. Uh, she's 25 years experience, over 25 years experience in HR, 10 of which she spent in the London uh, market. Um, and she's been with Distilled since 2015. 
and uh, I've been delighted to get to know Laura over the last number of years as Distilled have gone through the, the Great Place to Work uh, program. So Laura, thanks a lot for joining us, really appreciate it. I think possibly a good way to start, Laura, is maybe if you could give everyone a sense as to the business in Distilled, SCH, what you do, um, and, and I guess where people are at the moment, working from home, a mix, how is that looking? Yeah, yeah no problem. Thank, thanks a million, Cahill. And when you say 25 years, it makes me feel really, really Sorry. old. Sorry. Um, <laughs> still, I'm only 21, though. <laughs> um, so, so just in, in terms of distilled, I think when everyone hears the name, they think we're some sort of a drinks company or something like that. I'm afraid we're nothing as exciting. Um, distilled is the group company name for daft.ie, adverts.ie and dundeal.ie. So we've about 140, 145 employees um, at the moment. Our, our main office in, is in Dublin, just off Georgia Street. Um, about um, 100 of our employees are based there. Um, Pre-COVID, we had an office in Waterford as well. Um, we kind of closed that very quickly at, at the start of COVID. Um, but we also have an office in Waterford, or in Wexford as well. So currently we have the office in Dublin that would host, you know, about 100 people. And then we have an office in, in Wexford um, where the other 45 to, to 50 people would be. So I, I suppose pre-COVID we were dab hands at using Zoom and, and, and Slack, which obviously worked to our advantage um, once COVID kicked in. But we had never worked from home at, at this scale. Um, you know, myself personally, I worked from home one day a week. Um, the maximum anyone really did work from home was two, maybe one or two works three days a week. So fast forward, um, you know, January, February, making plans, you know, we had no idea how this would work. I think we took a day in February and told everyone to work from home to see how everything would work. And luckily it all went fine. Um, and we all work off laptops anyway. So, so that was absolutely fine. So yeah, we're, we're all working from home now. Um, you know, we're all able to do our jobs. Um, business, um, you know, is able to function. Um, you know, we've been able to adapt to to our customers as well. I think that the the big kind of um, the the big issue with employees is probably Zoom fatigue. Uh, I think we all all have it at, at this stage. Uh, and the other one is just lack of human connection and and not being able to see each other. You know, I'm fortunate. I'm living in a house with my husband. I have my own office. Of, you know, I've got my kids around. But like we've employed um, about a third of our workforce are from outside Ireland. And a lot of them are, you know, living on their own in apartments and flats on their own or, you know, and then we have people like everyone does in house share situations. So, you know, they're they're working from their bedrooms, living in their bedrooms. So, you know, that's been tough on them. Um, so we try to do as much as we can um, to support those people. Thanks, Laura. And, and just, just on that connection piece then, because it's come up a lot, right? So, so even with people who've kind of got into a rhythm around working from home, they still miss that connection with their colleagues. Um, when, when it was okay to, to connect with people, um, did you do anything within Distilled in terms of people coming together? Did that happen over the last few months? Yeah, we did. And only yesterday, we're encouraging it again for, for the month of December. We're, we're asking teams, um, you know, to get together um, in an outdoor capacity to go on a hike, a walk, a bike ride, if they're daring enough to go for a swim, bring a packed lunch. Um, we do it all in a, in a COVID um, safe way, like we've done COVID training with all of our employees, anyone that attends one of these outdoor events has to fill in you know the COVID form to say that they haven't been in contact with anyone um an absolute massive difference to, to, to people um you know even I'd be on the leadership team and um, we took to the Dublin mountains for a day and and did a planning session there um we probably looked a bit strange but we had a whiteboard uh brought camping table brought chairs and um, we did another session in our CEO's back garden um but I know what, what other teams have done, like they've picked, you know, interesting things to do in their counties, you know, where there's a castle or a night cycle, the greenways and stuff. And the teams have come together and done it and it's done people the world a good. And now prior to Christmas, we've asked teams to just meet up, to try and meet up twice before Christmas. 
and and then we're putting together um I, f I felt like a little bit like a matchmaker because I'd know one employee was living on their own, just say in, in Randall, and I'd know there was another employee living on their own in Randall. And I just wanted to get them together and say, why don't you hook up and go for walks or, or whatever? But to kind of counteract that, I'm just saying we're, we've put together a Dublin walking group so um, that anyone who wants to go for a walk in Dublin um, will meet up and go on this walk. And we've done the same thing now in the Southeast as well. So it's just to get those employees that might be a little bit more isolated they may even have just joined us during COVID as well, so they wouldn't actually know people. So to kind of encourage them to go out and the first number of walks, um, we'll have a guide um, at the walks. So, you know, he'll encourage people to, he or she will encourage people to talk to each other and, um, you know, make sure it's done in, in a COVID safe um, fashion as well. Wow, amazing, Laura. So if you're walking past the sea, you might see somebody from distil distilled in the sea, or if you're... Yeah. Dublin Mountains, it could be the leadership team. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's brilliant. And, and I suppose getting into the topic then of recognition virtually, Laura, um, maybe give people a flavour of your approach and some of the practices that you have in place in, in the still. Yeah, I suppose so. A lot of these practices were in, in place pre-COVID, um, but I suppose COVID has you know, because I think people have more time to think, you know, they and, you know, because they're isolated um, as well, I think you really need to up your game in, in terms of what you're doing around motivation, engagement and, and recognition. So one of the things that we do is a thing called Shining Stars. So we hold a company um, monthly. We call it a huddle. It's the equivalent of a, a town hall in, in other companies. And we have a peer recognition um, system called the Shining Stars. So basically any employee can nominate another employee um, for a Shining Star. Um, you have to give the reason why you're nominating the employee. And the nomination has to be in line with our company values. So you have to say what company value you're nominating them against. And again, why? Um, so anyone can nominate and you can do as not many nominations as you want. Um, all the nominations would go into um, somebody in my team. When you're nominated, um, you get a really nice email. So you're, you'll get an email into your inbox to say, hey, Laura, congratulations. You've been nominated for these reasons and your manager will be CC'd on, on the email. So straight away, there's that recognition, you know, with your manager from your peers. And then when we do our, our monthly huddle, um, our CEO goes through all the nominations and, you know, points out, you know, the, the really good things that people have done. Um, and the leadership team are, are the ones who would vote on, on who the winners are. Um, so the leadership team can't win. Um, okay, so there's been nominations, um, but they can't win. And, and we would do the, the voting. And if ever there was a tie, uh, on the leadership team, the, the, the CEO will, will pick who the winners are. So we, we did just used to have three um, individual winners. But one of the pieces of feedback that we got over the last two months was by having individual winners, um, you were kind of pipping teams against individuals. So the three winners could be a team, but it wasn't definitely a team. So we've changed it now this month that there's one team winner and, and two individuals. Um, so the winner is is called out in, in the company meeting and, you know, in the good old days when we were in the office, you know, we had a, a star trophy and they would get a, a one for all voucher. And um, now they would still get that, but, but in the post. Um, and then at the end of the, the meeting, we have a company Slack channel. So all the nominations and the reasons for the nominations are also posted in there. And that's really nice because you know, you get people putting comments in and well done and that was really great work and, and stuff. So there's a number of different pieces of, of recognition um, that you get there. We also, at the start of that meeting, have a thing called shout outs. Um, so the CEO would open the meeting um, and people managers can ask the CEO to give people in, in their team basically a shout out. So it could be, I want to give Cahill a shout out because he arranged this great meeting in the forest and it was really well done or whatever it is. The CEO will acknowledge this. And again, you're getting that acknowledgement in, in front of the full team. Um, we have a kudos channel actually that works really well. Again, anyone can post in it, but it's just, uh, you just put into Slack at kudos, put the person's name and you put in why 
um, they're getting kudos and it, it reminds me a little bit like my daughter with her likes and all this on, on whatever she's on TikTok or whatever but you know people put in their likes and they put in comments and there's a real feel good factor and a lot of recognition um, from your, your peers as well. Um, the other thing that we have is through, through our HR system, we have um, quarterly um, feedback. So every quarter, each person gets two pieces of feedback from um, other people in the company. Um, so your manager requests that feedback and that feedback, um, you have to give motivational and developmental feedback out for, for everyone. So, you know, every quarter, everyone's getting, you know, at least two pieces of, of motivational um, feedback as well. And we do performance development reviews once every quarter as well. Um, and um, yeah, the, it gives the manager, you know, a chance to, to, to give the recognition as well there. Well, Laura, so, so some, some great things. I think you've done a great job explaining the flow as well in terms of from the peer to peer and um, goes into the, the, the shout out. Um, so where people are recognized, who selects it. Um, if I'm putting in a nomination, and this is very basic, am I, am I sending an email? Am I using Slack? How do I, how do I put in that nomination? Um, a Google Sheet, a Google Form, sorry. So we send out a Google Form um, and you just put the nomination in using the, the, the Google Form and the HR team have access to the form. Yeah. Uh, so we get all the nominations and, and take it from there. Brilliant, Laura. And one of the things we see with recognition is sometimes it can... The practice can cease being stimulus. Um, I, is, do you freshen it up? How do you, do you get feedback in on how it's working for people? How, how do you handle that piece? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying we're doing it perfectly. And look, as I said to you, you know, we had feedback about the the teams versus individuals recently. Um, we we run um, twice yearly employment engagement sur surveys in addition to to great places to work. Um, and one of the one of the areas that we would measure on there would be recognition. Um, so we would know by team how people are feeling about recognition. So when I get the output of that survey, I can immediately say, um, you know, that just say the HR team um, feel that the recognition is is overly low um, in the team, and they might say, you know, for whatever reasons and. Like I did actually get that feedback from my team um, about six months ago. And it, it was a typical example of we're looking after, I was looking after everybody else in the company and, you know, you forget your own, your, your own family, but it's, it's blatantly clear from, from that in terms of, you know, how people are, are feeling about recognition. And we would get, so not only just from the data and the numbers, but there would also be, um, where people would actually put comments in and, and, and give you feedback. And the, the, the other thing that we do is, I mentioned that we do quarterly performance development reviews. And um, the first question in, in those um, every quarter are, is um, about, I, I feel, um, it's basically, I can't remember the exact question, but it's about how you feel you're recognized in the company. And the four options are, I feel highly valued. I sometimes feel valued. I'm not sure others value what I do and I don't feel valued at all. So straight away from that, you can actually pinpoint to individuals and, you know, it can be recognition and um, it mightn't be recognition, um, but we can definitely look into it with, with that data. The, the other thing that we do is for, you know, a lot of our, our senior um, employees or employees that have been with us a long time, we run a thing called the Hogan Assessment. Um, and that looks at something called MVPI, <clears throat> excuse me, which is basically the reason why we all get out of bed in the morning and, and do our jobs. And the first thing that that measures is recognition. So how important recognition is for individuals. So if you have someone in your team and, you know, getting that shining star, getting that shout out is important to them. You absolutely have to make sure that you're doing it because that, that's what motivates them. That's what makes them feel good and, and all of that. So. It's really about getting to know your team, I think. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Laura. And, and um, you talked there about maybe getting feedback from, from your own team in terms of that recognition piece. And, and you're like, you know, all, all organizations, you have a mix of managers. And I guess some are naturally good at recognition and some maybe it's not even on their radar or they struggle yeah. to do it. How, how do you, how, how is that identified, I, I guess, through the feedback process? And then is there some way you support those managers to enhance their recognition approach? Absolutely. So 
I mean, it's straight away through the, you know, we, we have the data from the, the employee engagement um, data, but we also have the quarterly, um, you know, the development feedback as well. So straight away, if I'm looking at just say your team, Pahal, and I'm saying, look, recognition, people don't feel valued in your team. Recognition is really low. I'll just sit down with you and, and talk to you about it. And, and I think very often it's not that people don't want to recognize their team, but just in, in terms of their priorities of things to do, it's at the bottom of the list. Whereas for some people in your team, it's extremely important and, and it, it should be at, you know, it should be higher up and at top of the list. And I think, you know, different people are motivated by different things. And I think that the power of a, a thank you or public recognition should never be underestimated. I mean, it, it goes a long way. And I think it's important to, to think outside the box as well. I mean, even during COVID, we did some funny things. I'm sure lots of people on the call had to do work on cookies and, you know, making sure that we were all cookie compliant. So we sent out the teams that worked on, on the cookie project, a, a box of cookies. Um, we did a migration to the cloud, we sent out cloud beer, you know, and it was just like people, like during COVID, you know, people just love to get something in the post or something delivered to the door. And like the laugh, the guys got out of the cookies because they said they opened the door, they got cookies and they're like, who in God's name is sending me cookies? <laughs> you know they got it but it's just like it's the small things that count you know exactly. as much as the big things i'm picturing the leadership team on the top of the dublin mountains freezing cold coming out with coming up with all these great ideas in terms of <laughs> and of, carrying a big whiteboard carl <laughs> yeah carrying the whiteboard yeah of course um so so laura for for companies on the call right they're sort of um blank sheet of paper they're looking to do recognition virtually um and we know you're doing great things is, is there any nuances they need to think about because it's virtual as opposed to traditional recognition any particular aspects they need to consider yeah i think with covid and, and i think because covid has been very tough on on people personally and lots of people are in in lots of difficult situations i think it's even more important at the moment that we do recognize good and, and strong performance in in our employees and really reinforce um, positive behaviours in our team. I think the top down um, recognition is important. I think the bottom up recognition is as important. And I think, you know, you know, when you look at your team, you nearly have to look at it person by person and think, OK, what recognition does each person like? How do they like to be recognised and, and, and adapted according to, to each person? And I don't think like one of the things that I've noticed with things that we've done during COVID, it's not the big grand gestures, like it's not giving a 500 euro voucher, it's not giving a big bonus. The small things have actually made such an impact um, in, in distilled to, to our employees and where a bit of thought goes in behind things as well. And, you know, people feel that it's, it's genuine and, you know, you'll get it back in spades because once people feel that it's been recognized, um, you know, from their peers, but also from, you know, the leadership team down in, in the company, it's really important. And I think it's something that HR puts in place, but it should be something that everybody wants to, to contribute to. I mean, we had feedback before, oh, it's the same person, people winning all the time. And I'm sure everyone on the call has heard that. But why are the same people winning all the time? Because you're not nominating people. And, um, you know, our CEO got up, you know, at one of our, our company huddles and, and, and said that, like, guys, you know, you can't be saying the same people are winning um, because the leadership team are picking the winners from the nomination. So if you're not nominating, um, you know, and, and it's to really bring that to the forefront of people managers' minds as well so that they get on the same page as you in terms of the importance and value of recognition because they need to work with their teams um, you know, to get the, the nominations in, but they equally need to give the shout outs and, and do the small powerful things as well. And recognition can be at team level as well. I mean, a team, there's no reason why a team can't have, you know, an employee of the month or, you know, some sort of a quirky award for, for whatever, but I think, you know, you need to look at it at, at all angles, at the company level, at the people manager level, at the team level, but it does, it doesn't have to be top down. Yeah. So, so great program grounded in the values, 
be prepared to show flex in terms of the practice and kind of it, improve it as, as needs be. I, I guess factor the individual nuances in terms of how people want or don't want yeah. to be to be recognized um so i think just some great great advice there um yeah Laura, Laura. i think the other thing i'd add Colin, sorry just what i think of it is the recognition needs to be timely um right. no point in recognizing me in three weeks time for something i did today the record or you know in the last month just say the recognition needs to be in the here and now as well yeah brilliant laura appreciate that uh, Laura, i know you're going to be around for, for for questions at the end um really appreciate you sharing your no story. problem um, and uh, Fanny, I'll pass over to you. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, the the there's been a flood into me about the whiteboards and the CEOs and whiteboards, <laughs> and people wondering is there actually a business in building a backpack with a whiteboard that you could like you know you know brainstorming on the go. Um, the other thing that I'm actually reflecting on from our own recognition in Great Place to Work. So you know, cookies to the cookie team. We got coffee angel coffee. So were we that angelic that you know we were aligning, uh, you know, coffee angel? So thanks, Paul. We uh, we really appreciate that. Um, actually, Laura, if you don't mind, there's, there's just one um, kind of specific question around your quarterly feedback that's probably worth kind of hitting off now before we we pop over to Elaine. Um, and it's around uh, the kind of the feedback that that the line manager gets for. It's, I'm presuming it's it's a people manager or line manager who's delivering that feedback. Yeah. Do they request feedback from other people on on the team, from colleagues, from managers? How how does that mechanism actually work to to get that feedback? So basically, every quarter they re they request feedback from t any two people in in the company. Now it's okay obviously two people that the person works closely with or you know works with but but the really good piece in that is you can get feedback from team members but if someone was working on a special project you know for a couple of months outside the team or it could be like someone in a support function like in, in HR you have a field day you can really request feedback from, from anybody um but it can be as well like um like my manager would be the CEO. So he would go to my direct reports and ask them for feedback on me, you know, as a manager, as well as other members of the leadership team that I would support on, on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's great, you know, it, you know, and it, it took us a while to get into a culture of feedback. Um, but the value of it now is, you know, that, you know, if someone sees that there's something that I've done well, I'm getting the recognition. If someone has feedback on maybe how to how I could do something better in the future, they're telling me now. I'm not finding out in six months, so I can improve it in the in the here and now. And I think that's what's what's been really important for us. Yeah, brilliant. No, thanks so much. I think it's with those ones. And while we would always say, you know, this copy and pasting practice doesn't make any sense, but actually learning about the nuance and what learning you've had as you've developed that practice, I think is yeah. really really useful for people. So, so yeah, thanks so much. And thanks so much for, for, for all of the insight there. That was, that was brilliant. Wow. Um, and yeah, like I said, there'll be, there'll be hopefully a bit of time for some more questions at the end, but I just thought because that one's quite specific, it was worth kind of hitting, hitting off now. So thank you, Laura. Thanks, Carl. And um, so I'm delighted to now introduce uh, Elaine Whelan. So Elaine, you can feel free to start sharing your slides if, if you want. Um, Elaine is the head of HR and engagement at O'Dwyer Real Estate, um, and she's been there for, for just over three years. Um, I, it's, I feel bad talking about these years of experience. She has lots of years of experience um, within medtech, financial services, uh, property management. She's a Chartered CIPD member um, and with a degree in sociology from UCD and a master's degree in business HR from, from DCU. Um, I've had the the kind of the pleasure and the privilege of of working with Elaine um, throughout the the kind of O'Dwyer real estate journey, uh, and it is mad to think back to uh, I think it was early spring when we were talking about kind of action plans and the back of the results and what 2020 was going to look like, um, and then obviously the world went a bit topsy turvy. Um, but the kind of the response that O'Dwyer have had, especially around the kind of pivoting around recognition has really stood out to us. Um, so without further ado, over to you, Elaine, to take us through what, what you've been up to in O'Dwyer over the last few months. Thank you so much, Fania. And yes, that seems like a lifetime ago that we were engaging about action plans that I never fully got to see through. So I suppose it's been a difficult journey for us and I'll touch on that a little bit today. But thank you so much for having me as part of this uh, conversation. And I've learned so much even from hearing Laura and her experience. So um, I hope I can share the same for, for the participants on the call. Um, I suppose my, my approach today is to give you a little bit of context around our company and the journey we've been on. And in light of that, the responses that we've kind of instigated across our company. 
and then giving the examples of how we've adapted our recognition practices. And, and there's numerous examples of things that we've kept and we've continued from before COVID, pre-COVID, the old normal, whatever way we like to refer to it, um, and our new normal. And I suppose our said aim is to get to a place where we can maybe create a hybrid of both of those approaches, taking the positives over the last few months and, and building them into other practices that we have. And um, I'll end, I suppose, by just touching on our learnings in the hope that they maybe benefit somebody on the call today. Um, so to talk through Wires and to give a little bit of brief context um, in terms of this call, um, the company was founded over 30 years ago by Siobhan O'Dwyer, who's our, our CEO and, and founder of the company, and is still very much at the helm of the operation today. Uh, we operate within residential property management, so that is a service sector, professional service sector for a wide range of clients. Um, the business has really evolved in that 30-year period, starting out as a single business unit, but moving more towards a diverse, multidisciplined range of service offerings across a nationwide portfolio. We employ approximately 50 people in our office, in our head office here in Sandyford, where I am today. And I suppose, essentially, we, we try to, to set up a framework that our team can operate within that provides a quality standard service delivery for them. And we do that in two ways. I suppose we're, we're accredited to ISO standards in health and safety, environmental and quality management systems. And that allows us an operational platform that we can be sure we're providing a quality service and that our teams are supported by practices and procedures. But in terms of our people strategy, we obviously are part of the Great Place to Work Network. And in 2020, we're awarded the best workplaces in the SME category um, certification. And that's something that we really pride ourselves on, that ability to be strong in our procedural side operationally, but also on that people strategy piece. And we utilize both ISO and Great Place to Work to really help us with that. I suppose pre-COVID, um, we loved a party and loved a get together. And it has been a massive challenge for us to adjust uh, away from that. I think our epic Christmas party was planned for next Friday and we've had to cancel, obviously, um, in light of that. But look, we've been able to adapt and, and it's been challenging, but we know we can get back to that in the future. And we know our team are sort of aware that we want to get back to that in the future as well. But we've tried our best to really, I suppose, keep the focus on recognition and employee engagement. In our view, I suppose we don't really see recognition as this standalone item. We see it as part, I suppose, holistically of our overall organizational culture. And we realize the impact that has, I suppose, on our productivity, our employee buy-in, and the overall, I suppose, employee retention and engagement program. Um, the physical interactions were such a key element for us, but we've been able to adapt and evolve over the last nine month period. Um, so I'll go through that in, in a bit more detail for you shortly. Um, in context of this company, in, in March 2020, and, and similar to Laura's experience, we had never, as a company, worked remotely before. Um, across the company, we had been based in the office with odd exceptions here and there on, on daily occasions, but never permanently. And um, The entire company transitioned in, in March 2020. I think it took us three days to be fully set up and operational from a remote capacity and environment. But it wasn't plain sailing for us um, because we're in the professional services industry. The initial lockdown in March actually meant that we could only carry out very limited work activity on behalf of our clients because a lot of it related to outbound activity and visiting people's homes, letting processes. So obviously there was a knock on effect and, and our service offering dwindled over that period. And unfortunately, that meant that we had to go down the route of temporary layoffs, and short time working arrangements across many of the service delivery departments. And that in itself had a knock on, obviously, in the motivation of the team and, and the negative impact in terms of, of the position we found ourselves in. For us, normal business was just put on hold from March and we went into essentially survival mode. Um, but what we did find in that period was that our ability to communicate with our team improved. We actually became more transparent in terms of the messaging. We, we, brought them along on our journey. We advised them of how difficult this was going to be and that we were all in this together. Um, and really, essentially, we were able to transition our focus um, away from the day-to-day -day of the last 30 years and focus instead of the strategy and use the time wisely to focus really on our people and operational strategy, our growth model once things could go, revert back to normal. And I think the tidy up of, of overall legacy issues across the company as we had the time now to focus on those areas. So essentially, we started to see the change in positive experience, and our employees did too. And we allowed this to become a period of reflection over the last 30 years and really focus in on things that we could do during this time to strengthen our position after COVID. Um, at that point, I mean, we really relied on our physical office environment for most of our communications approaches. And we 
needed to transition that away and move into a virtual environment. One of the turning points and one of the key tools that we probably used to do that was the Pulse survey that you guys in Great Place to Work arranged for us um, during that first lockdown. We were able then to use the feedback from the employees to really hone in on the areas that they wanted us to improve and they wanted us to focus on. And that feedback was, I suppose, invaluable to us in terms of the adaption of our recognition and engagement program. The areas that they really called out that needed to be focused on were those clear direction and communication principles, the enhanced engagement over the entire company, and I suppose the introduction of more social interactions in the virtual environment. And that just gave us the direction we needed to push forward and try to adapt existing recognition and engagement practices. So I suppose I want to touch through some examples today because I hope that might benefit the, the people on the call today in terms of their own approach to adapting existing recognition practices. In terms of communication, it was probably one of the first areas we really focused in on and one of the most important for us and, and still today is one of the most important areas. And um, while it didn't happen on the Dublin mountains, we did move <laughs> towards Zoom <laughs> for our, our, our <laughs> weekly huddles. So we moved away from those physical monthly town hall meetings where it was more so communication from the CEO and the leadership team to the staff to a virtual interactive town hall setting. So that was a turning point. We, we introduced a much more interactive session for the staff every week and um, we really kept them informed of the difficult decisions we were facing on a weekly basis it wasn't all rosy it wasn't all everything's great guys it was these are difficult decisions we have to make but we want to keep you informed and we realize the benefit of that of having a fully informed team throughout this time we also increased the frequency i suppose at, at the senior levels of the company within the slt and the senior management teams the frequency of those interactions and meetings and really i suppose going into more detail in terms of our strategic intent over this period and really trying to get us back on track but we didn't stop at the, the top levels of the company we wanted to make sure that the peer and um, communication continued the employee manager relationship was strengthened over this period so we introduced daily one-to-ones using internal microsoft teams networks um, and also daily huddles for each of the departments. And that's where the employee could really raise those operational concerns, but also concerns that they may have been experiencing relating to COVID, relating to the knock-on on the business, et cetera. Some of the more social aspects on the communication side were really revolved around our weekly virtual catch-ups, which was a suggestion from one of our employees, uh, where we basically just set up a Zoom call for them in an informal setting every week, and they got together, like the kind of water cooler, I suppose, environment in an office, but we changed that to Zoom again. Um, but it worked and it, it just allowed employees to hop in and out and have those little casual interactions that they would normally have in an office environment. And um, we really focus in on employee well-being, uh, obviously because it was an essential area to focus on over this period and it was something we were very concerned about, our employees well-being. So I, I'll touch on it in more detail in a, in a further example, but we introduced weekly campaigns that really did get that buy-in from employees just to safeguard their own well-being, but to also focus on, on being part of that wider team and getting them involved in some of the initiatives we were running. And um, we set up teamed group meetings. So uh, sometimes the town hall can seem a little bit formal. So we wanted to kind of make a more relaxed environment for employees. So a drink on us, we, we arranged kind of Friday evening get together supported by the company. We, we arranged uh, initiatives around different uh, celebrations and events like the Pride weekend, uh, Wellbeing Day, different initiatives that we always supported, but we just adapted them into that virtual environment. And then I suppose from a health and safety and a safeguarding perspective, we set up a representative sample of employees to form a COVID-19 compliance committee. So that group of employees really did hone in on representing the, the, the bigger team voice and putting forward ideas and, and supporting the initiatives around a phased return to the office environment, just to make sure that we had everyone's perspective on that. So essentially for us, communication evolved into what was traditionally quite a formal physical environment arrangement into this more informal, relaxed, but more frequent um, get together for all employees, really ensuring that all levels of the company had that opportunity to speak and all those interactions uh, were meaningful for them. The next area that we really honed in on, I suppose, in terms of the overall recognition was the individual well-being um, and, and mindfulness of the campaigns that we ran. There's an awful lot of colour on that slide I see there, so uh, sorry about that. Um, some of the examples below are the challenges that we ran each week. Um, so we, we kind of created a range of different challenges to get the guys involved in physical, mental, just 
peace of mind kind of well-being areas as well and each week we ran those and there was something that the guys uh, should focus on over that week and we ran little photo competitions and different things as well just to keep that engagement level up and there was always a few spot prizes thrown in there as well to, to keep them involved and happy and um, we've always here really focused in on key days like uh, the national well-being day and world mental health day world heart health day they're ones that mean a lot to us um, and traditionally we would have had again physical activities arranged in relation to those days so we adapted our practices for, for national well-being day we gave everybody time off during the working week to go and engage in a, an activity that was safe to do so in their home environment or outside and um, as you can see in the pictures there at the bottom some people got really creative um, <laughs> and we had again some some prizes associated with that and, and the winners received the knock at the door and a big healthy hamper of food from from sprout um, and then also as well for World Mental Health Day, and you'll see that in the top right hand corner there, we arranged a me time campaign. So essentially, again, we gave the employees time to focus on something that brought them joy, just time to shut off the laptop, step away from the, the temporary desk in your home office and, and, and really just focus on something that brings you joy and peace. And that could have been as simple as having a cup of coffee or ringing a friend that you couldn't see during lockdown. Um, but those initiatives to us really brought to that human touch element that we were really trying not to lose, I suppose, uh, through COVID. Um, and that was key to us throughout this um, environment. The third area, just to touch on, I suppose, engagement and, and development activities. Um, we pride ourselves on always really trying to mark those key milestones, whether that's for an individual employee or across the board, birthdays, events, no one escapes. We, we cover everything. <laughs> so we continue to do that and, and mark the big milestones for our employees, like traditional poster campaigns or items that we would have ran through the office. We just did that in a virtual environment, utilizing MailChimp as a, as a key platform. Um, and we really got the teams involved. Uh, you can see our, our Halloween poster there that involved a lot of work from IT and data and, and pulling a few little different things together for our, for our teams. And everyone enjoys that and just enjoys the little associated um, fun that comes with it, I suppose. We also use the time to hone in on, I suppose, giving our people an opportunity to develop themselves. So we partnered with an external training provider, DCM, just to provide some additional training modules for staff that they could, they could do in their own time, in their own comfort from home, and, and throughout those lockdown periods where there may have been additional commuting time that was saved, so they could put it to use. That worked really well for our team, and they really liked those opportunities to, I suppose, enhance their own skill sets and development there. But we haven't lost sight of what we, we did previously. We're marking the same occasions, they're engaging in the same way. We're just trying to adapt those into, into the environment we currently are. So in the future, we hope to find a hybrid of both and, and, and take the best bits of both together. The final example I want to touch on is just what's coming up, I suppose, the, the Christmas period. And this is when traditionally, again, we would really hone in on the gratitude piece. Um, our CEO and our, our senior management team overall really, I suppose, relish that opportunity to, to show um, how much we appreciate the efforts of our team. Um, and Christmas was traditionally always our time to do that. So we really had to think hard about how do we mark this for our teams and how do we really make sure they, they feel valued and they feel that recognition. Um, so we've created, and I can't talk too much because I think there's some Odrum listeners on the <laughs> webinar today um, and this is taking place next week. So I'll, I'll be vague on some of the detail. So it's, uh, we're running a five day, uh, five days of Christmas next week. And we've listened to the feedback from our teams that really try to limit the Zoom um, elements where, where we can, but still arrange different activities and, and, and initiatives for the team. Our day of recognition, the first day, is actually going to be an award show in a, in a virtual environment where every employee will receive recognition on that day and there's associated prizes. Again, shy on the <laughs> details, sorry. <laughs> our next day, the cheer has actually involved getting all of our, our, our management team together and they've been given a project to record certain things with their families and friends at home and they will be um, put together into a quiz essentially for the staff that will be allocated out during that day, prizes associated that will be sent out to staff, but it really just gets everybody involved and it's, it's quite funny, some of the, the videos that are being shot right now, it's, it's, it's exciting. Um, our third day is something we've always done, our day of giving. So we always partner with St. Vincent de Paul as a charity over the Christmas period and the company will continue to make that donation we built in our Christmas jumper day um, on that day as well. So we set up our GoFundMe page for St. Vincent de Paul to arrange for the donations for employees. And we'll have a Zoom call again to, to kind of see the efforts in terms of the jumpers and there's some prizes for best jumper and maybe for worst jumper as well. Uh, and we have a few different ideas on that day. So, so we, that's something that's continuing from before. It's just again, adapted to the virtual environment. Day of surprise, 
we're just doing a few things that day uh, that will um i can't say much sorry <laughs> we're gonna have to invite you back elaine in like three weeks time to play so what did you actually do on all these days yeah I'll yeah there, i promise <laughs> after next week um that day we just have a few little initiatives and a few little just um tokens for employees that will be distributed on that day to again uh, demonstrate the, the gratitude that we have in terms of their commitment over this year and their real buy into the difficult journey that we've had. And then the final day is again something from, from pre-COVID times, uh, we always arrange a secret Santa. So we've used, uh, used the draw names um, online platform this year. So obviously you can add in your, your postal addresses. So it's again a, a safe kind of practice this year and on our town hall on the 11th we'll all open those gifts at the same time and um, we've also engaged with some and supporting some local businesses to arrange some other little surprises on the day um i couldn't be more cryptic could i <laughs> <laughs> well i'm just wondering could i just become an o'dwyer employee <laughs> next week and just uh <laughs> ride the yes, wave so, yes, yeah you can. yes you can. <laughs> um, fun activities and we really have to just listen in to the employees feedback and, and the zoom fatigue that Laura mentioned earlier is is a real thing and we yeah. really try to limit that but, but make sure that there's still things going on every day and um, so we really hope that the employees buy into it and see that it is our attempt to show the gratitude that they really deserve uh, this year and there's a number of other things that we've ran throughout the year like international women's day we, we did a campaign around that supporting our women who you'll see in the picture at the bottom um, and, and things like that we felt really just brought that human touch again to our to our initiatives and that's something that we really tried to foster and, and, and develop over the last nine months and um, so i suppose to, to wrap up and sorry if i've talked for too long um, and some <laughs> of the key learnings and, and, and things that we've really taken on board after the nine months um after this nine month period is really that we never underestimate the value of applying that human touch it's been a challenge to do that in these virtual environments and i know laura would probably agree with me that it's hard to get that across, you know, to your team that you're listening, you're, you're taking on what means a lot to them and really trying to put that back into the initiatives and into their recognition programs. But you cannot underestimate the value of, of, of being able to do that. So that's something that I think would be key for anybody uh, listening in today. Also listening to your employees. I, I talked around communication first because I really feel that was the, the kind of cornerstone of our entire approach. Um, listening to your employees, it, it, have to have that two-way engagement um, process it really is valuable and it can really help you build the right approach to recognition and engagement overall tied to that and I suppose similarly uh, promoting that transparent communication as I said from the outset we had a very difficult period and thankfully all of our employees have returned from those temporary layoff and short-time working arrangements but it's been a difficult journey but communicating with the team and being very open and honest with them that has led to so many benefits for us and we really have a truly informed team and I feel their buy-in and their motivation around that has just really helped um, and I suppose to, to finish essentially we had to view COVID-19 as an opportunity we had to view the changes that it brought as something positive for us and to use the time as best we could that wasn't something that automatically switched on in March but it was something that we, we I suppose learned along the way and on our journey we see that ability I suppose to adapt and evolve um, over that time is something that we're proud that we've been able to do and it's had a powerful impact on our business um, and where we see ourselves in the future is really taking that employee recognition program from the last nine months and bedding that into the previous practices so trying to find that happy medium or balance there's definitely some things that we think we'll keep going with and there's definitely some things I think we would prefer to go back to the old way on but it's finding that balance and finding what works best for, for everybody and that's it I think. Uh, that's brilliant. Thanks so much, Lena. It's I think what's come out from both um, sessions actually is we had a way of doing things that we knew worked well for the way we were working, the way we were working changed. So we've just adapted and figured out those kind of elements that we wanted to continue and the bits that we had to be a bit more, I suppose, agile around and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so really, really, really good to see that. The other thing that strikes me about yours is this idea of what I suppose what recognition means, and it is this wider sense of you guys were going on a strategic journey this year, which you probably wouldn't have had the time or the opportunity to do, do. Uh, yeah. in, a, in a, any other given year. And you were recognizing the employee role within that, and they stepped up to that as well. Like that's kind of what, what it feels like. That's almost been the biggest success for us at this period. So so really it was it was difficult timing for us, but getting the employees to come along on that journey and being part of that was recognition in terms of how, how valuable they were to us in, ter in terms yeah. of getting there and getting what we needed to do done over this period. But it, it really has been invaluable to have their buy-in and, and 
they feel valued and their opinion is valued and, and I hope that's transparent to them as well in terms of the strategy going forward. Um, there is one specific question from, from Tom Elaine who's asking about your COVID compliance committee. Yeah. Uh, great initiative. Just wondering, is this open to all employees? Is it leadership only? Do you have, what are the mechanisms for feedback? How does it actually work? It's open to all employees. So we kind of have a representative group um, at the moment that, that, that really put the agenda forward for us and they meet in a Zoom environment. We have uh, members of the management team on there too, but we've managed to have people from all levels of the organization involved. Essentially, they come together and come up with items that may need to be considered. We obviously have a, a phased return to the work at the moment. So we have some people in the office here and it's on a rota and a scheduled basis. Essentially, their, their aim is to make sure that everybody's comfortable with the approach we're taking. Um, then attendance to the office is by invitation only at this point. So no one's under that pressure to come in and engage. But we do feel having a committee there representing the employee voice and group supports us in making sure we're making those right decisions. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and I think actually both of you have spoken about the, that, that importance of the bottom up piece, right? So there's a, you know, there's the role for the top down and that's very important on the comms and where we're going, but there is also a key, a key role to be played by kind of everybody in this, especially at the moment and, and buying into that change. Yes. Um, okay, so the questions are, are definitely being to come in. So we might just kind of begin to open it up to, to everybody now. Um, but uh, first one is, is, is from Susan, who's asking around, um, how have you provided opportunities, if you have, for employees to support each other virtually like they would have last year? Like I know, Laura, you're talking about your, your matchmaking service, right? So knowing where people maybe were um, in isolation together or whatever it is. Any other examples of that kind of support piece for, for, for employees at the moment? Yeah, I think like it's similar to, to kind of what Elaine said. I mean, we're arranging kind of coffee mornings, um, you know, people to, to have lunches, uh, drinks on a Friday, um, and just where you're talking about anything other than work, um, and actually asking employees to check in on each other as well. That was one of the things that we did earlier on, like just say to people, look, not everyone is in the same situation. Some people are living on their own. Some people have just recently moved to Ireland. You know, can you make sure that you check in on each other and, um, you know, talk to each other. And like, I know we have, um, uh, it's like a, a sports and social club a bit more than that called the Distillers. And, and they'd be very good at, you know, putting on events that, you know, different types of events that would suit different people, um, you know, whether it's pe people with kids or whether it's gamers or, you know, whether it's things. So it encourages people to talk to people that they wouldn't uh, ordinarily talk to as well. You wonder why people think you're a drinks company when your sports and social <laughs> committee is called the distillers. <laughs> I love that. Party yeah. would, a good party would form part of our DNA. <laughs> um, anything else to that, Lynn? Yeah, I think sometimes it's not always those formal practices that really matter. It's those informal interactions that the employees can have. And as we've said, the virtual coffee mornings and get togethers and similar, I think, to, to an initiative that Laura's mentioned. We have like a virtual thank you arrangement on our, our HR system as well, where the employees can just share that amongst each other. Everyone can see it. And there's that little piece of recognition always running through our initiatives. So it can sometimes be just those informal opportunities, I suppose, to get employees to, to bond together and 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 really feel part of the journey as, as, as a group. Yeah. yeah, the other thing that, that we've done um, is just on, on our Slack, we have lots of different channels, like there's pets gone wild, um, cooking, uh, <laughs> rents, gardeners, you know, so people who've got common hobbies are putting things into to different channels. And I think it just allows people to connect with people that they wouldn't ordinarily do. And like though in those channels, people are active over the weekends, you know, as well as during the week. It, it really strikes me. I think one of the things that we've seen is when this initially happened, there was the kind of the, the, the summer Zoom boom, right? Like everybody was was kind of, you know, it was all about it and all coming together and all that kind of stuff. And what really seems to have struck me about both of your presentations is, or kind of talks is, the move away has still allowed for people to get together, but it doesn't have to be, you know, all together on Zoom all the time, you know. Yeah. It's actually finding what those are kind of little niche areas are that you can kind of go off and is it an interest or or is it just a support piece or, or what that might be yeah um, the other the other question then is and, and a couple of people have noticed that like you both are quite active on on social media and the employer brand and, and kind of very good at, at putting it out there kind of what what you're up to um, and has that been you know because i think you're both continuing to hire at the moment i think as as far as yeah. i'm aware it has 
has the recognition piece has that been useful as part of that employer brand has it is it something that people are asking about you know how what have you found i suppose in in, in those new hire conversations I go first. Uh, I <laughs> sorry, sorry, Laura. Um, yeah, I think it's it's vital um, when it comes to the new hires. And I suppose essentially, yes, recognition and isolation, but the overall culture of that company and trying to to bring somebody into this environment when they're not physically getting to meet a lot of their peers and colleagues is so difficult. Um, so it's really trying to portray to them the opportunities that are there to do those interactions and to have that engagement where they can. Um, It can be hard to do. We're finding it a little bit easier now because again, we have the phased return to the office where we can have some level of safe physical interactions. Um, But it has been a challenge. We've we've been hiring since this kind of summer onwards and it's, it's really trying to get the message across to the teams that look, your well-being, your involvement in the wider team is really a priority to us. And we do use, I suppose, LinkedIn, social media platforms to really highlight the key initiatives that we're running and just get that message out there. Yeah. And I think it's really important to give people because the one thing that we it's it's hard to sell over Zoom is is the culture. Like it's not something that's tangible. You can write down all you want to better culture, but I think you know, what you put out in social media. We've got a good few videos um, where employees have been interviewed. It just gives people a sense of what the, the company is about. And, and the other thing that the social media does is it gives employees of the company great pride in, in working in the company as well. Like there's nothing like someone getting a comment going, I can't believe your company's doing that. That's amazing. Or, you know, and it's just, you know, that, that, that kind of you know, people just sometimes realizing all, all that is being done and people kind of feeding that back to them as well. I, I think that's important as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. brilliant. No, well, thanks for all that. Now, uh, Ross, who I think might be O'Dwyer Real Estate has asked what's happening on the surprise day. <laughs> uh, so no, that's not gonna happen. So Ross. <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> um, no inside knowledge on on this today. Nothing. Oh God, I should have <laughs> mentioned it. <laughs> um, and we've, we've we've got a question in from from Tom, which I think is is probably one where where we don't have time for it today. Um, and actually, Kahala, I might use this as a, as the handover to you, which is the kind of the crystal ball gaze. Um, so you know, blended working, return to work, future of work, half to twenty twenty one. And I know, Kahala, this is something we're going to be focusing on um, as we kind of move forward into into 2021 ourselves and, and kind of creating community support around that but I don't know do you do you want to to, to answer Tom's question there yeah so so um it, it's it's more to say Tom so so it's it's a hot topic right lots of companies are considering what will the future look like um you know I, I think it's important it's not just a discussion about flexibility but it's a, a discussion about the future of our workplace how will we do development how will we do performance and how will we do well-being, et cetera. So it's it's a topic we're going to deal with in the new year, Tom. So so keep an eye, keep an eye out for that. I love Ross's question. It's like it's, pan- <laughs> it's like it's panto season already. <laughs> I have to go back into the office now and I'm gonna have loads of questions, I feel. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> Um, uh, just to, I suppose just a couple of comments maybe from me just to really appreciate um, the, the insights that, that, you, that you both shared. Um, I mean, I've certainly learned to say lots of experience rather than put the years of experience uh, in terms of my introduction. So that's been uh, great. I think Laura, <laughs> Laura, is too, um, Laura is too modest probably to share some of their data, right? So, so just to give you a really quick look in the area of recognition, from two years to to now, that area of per distilled has improved by 18%, wow. uh, which takes them comfortably into the 80% in terms of how people are feeling about recognition. Um, so look, that's that, that's a stat that backs up all the all the work. Uh, and, and Elaine, I found it really interesting. Um, and of course, you're right. Uh, well-being is a recognition tool, right? Um, how we use communication is a recognition tool. Sometimes we like to pigeon things into into kind of that mm-hmm. one area. So, so I think that was really interesting. And, and just to say, like now more than ever, people need people like you who are focused on them and the culture and improving their experience. And your people are very lucky to have you at the helm. Um, so thanks very much for for joining us. Appreciate it. And, and Fanny, I'll pass over to you. Yeah, brilliant. And just to echo that, thank you to both Elaine and Laura, the insight, I mean, the, the message is coming in now, you know, candid, authentic. And I guess just to, to thank all of you for, for being a part of our, our webinar journey <laughs> over the last few months. It has been a learning experience for us too, right? Um, but we have really relished the, the challenge, the opportunity that it's brought. And just to thank each 
uh, member of, of the expert panel um, over over the last little while who've kind of been with us and shared with us. And um, it's it's been a it's been a fantastic experience to be a part of. And we, we look forward to building this now into, into 2021 um, and kind of Tom preempting us there a little bit around, you know, the focus really will be maintaining that sense of community as we all try and figure out what the world of work is going to look like in 2021 and getting people back to offices and, and what that's going to look like. Um, but yeah, a massive thank you to, to everybody who's been a part of this uh, this year um, and, and looking forward to, to working with you all again next year. Um, and we've managed it. It's the last one. It's 10.59 uh, on you know, a December Thursday morning in 2020. Um, so thank you all. We managed to minimize the buzzwords. I mean, I think whiteboard is about as buzzwordy as we got, but it was in a very novel, very novel setting. So I'm delighted with that. Um, and hopefully see you all very soon. So yeah, thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, Gahal. Thanks, Elaine. And thanks, Laura. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.